So, it simply means that if I start with a Gaussian pulse of a uh, full width 2 tau naught, it means that in the frequency domain it is still a Gaussian with delta omega as 2 by tau naught approximately. Okay. The reason why we are calculating this is to show that, so in the frequency domain how is it going to look like if I just look at the positive frequency at the center frequency omega naught it is shifted you see it is shifted with respect to omega naught. So, at the center frequency it is also going to look like a Gaussian with your 1 by E spread as 2 divided by tau naught. Okay. Uh, there is a 0 frequency somewhere here, okay. the d c somewhere here, this omega naught is your carrier frequency, if you are using 15 15 nanometer that carrier frequency is of the order of some 190 terahertz. What we also want to know is that what is this delta omega with respect to omega naught, to get a feel for how spread your Gaussian is going to look like. Okay. So, this delta omega divided by omega naught is actually uh, 2 by tau naught omega naught actually. So, let us get some feel for the numbers, what, del what spread are we talking about? Are we talking about, uh, if I have a spread in delta omega, how do I now convert as a spread in delta lambda? So, you say that C is uh, F lambda, which is 2 pi uh, uh, sorry it should be omega by 2 pi times lambda. So, how do I convert? So, lambda is c uh, omega is 2 pi c over lambda. So, d omega is magnitude of d omega is 2 pi c by lambda square d lambda right. This is I have the magnitude of omega, so I do not need this here. The point we are trying to make here is that we want to get an idea of what is the spread when compared to omega naught and why are we doing this? We are doing this because when we talked about intermodal uh, delay, we said c divided by n is my speed and this n as a function of omega is we are trying to see whether you are looking at n as a function of omega and for what frequencies are you looking at n as a function of omega. We know from our prism idea the other day we talked about you know frequencies n is a function of lambda and when n is a function of lambda n becomes a function of omega in that sense and so you have uh, dependence of uh, velocity along uh, as a function of lambda. But we want to see over what extent of lambda or what extent of uh, omega are we looking at this spread. Okay. So, let us take the case of our uh, you know 25 gigabaud uh, transmission. Okay. Uh, o k is also fine. So, this is my baud rate, my bit slot is 1 by 25.04 nanoseconds which is uh, 40 picoseconds. Okay. So, your slot is 40 picoseconds. And let us say you inside that you are imagining your pulse is a Gaussian which has sorry, a width of let us say half of the bit slot. Okay. So, let us say my tau naught or uh, 2 tau naught, 2, now, 2 tau naught is my full width. So, 2 tau naught is equal to uh, 20 picoseconds, it is covering half of my bit slot. So, that my tau naught is 10 picoseconds. Okay. For this case, let us calculate what this uh, and let us say your lambda is equal to 15 15 nanometer. Okay. So, what is the corresponding frequency? Of course, you can calculate free space uh, lambda naught, omega naught free space frequencies 2 pi into c by lambda sorry. And what is that number? I, 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 I want to calculate this number delta omega divided by omega naught. So, if delta omega is uh, this is 4, this becomes 4. So, 
this becomes 4 divided by 10 picoseconds multiplied by 2 pi into 3 into 10 power 8 uh, into 1.5 into 10 power minus uh, 1.55 into 10 power minus 6. point 3 which is 3 into 10 power minus 4 roughly. So, what does this tell you? If I pulse at 25 gigabaud, the frequency spread that I have when compared to your carrier frequency is 10 power minus 4 times. Meaning, in the frequency domain, you are still talking about a extremely narrow spectrum when compared to your center frequency, okay. which means the n versus lambda, n as a function of lambda or n as a function of omega that you have to worry about is only at a very small spread with respect to your omega. Okay. So, it is not like you are going from 1300 to 1500 nanometer and you are looking at a large spread. It is not. So, do not imagine this dispersion like a prism dispersion where white light goes in and you get different colors and these colors are separated by about 300 nanometers or 400 nanometers and so you see a very large difference just to understand the order of magnitude. So, the order of magnitudes here are going to be still very very small because a spread in even in a 25 gigabaud system is only 10,000 times smaller than the actual center frequency. Okay. Now, there is another spread we are talking about. What is that spread? This is a spread because you modulate it, but there was another spread in wavelength spread we were talking about the line width of the laser or the line width of the LED itself. What is the typical line width of an LED? So, uh, roughly around 25 30 nanometer that is LED and let us say you take an LED and you modulate it with this what is the delta omega you are getting what is the delta lambda corresponding to that I want you to feel get a feel for 31 nanometer versus what is the spread because of your pulse modulation. So, you had a delta omega here right which is 4 by tau naught right and so that is 4 divided by 10 picoseconds which is 0.4 into 10 power uh, 12 which is 400 gigahertz. Uh, well, it is not gigahertz in that sense because this is still uh, delta omega delta f would be 400 into 10 power 9 divided by 2 pi this would be in uh, hertz this is delta f. So, what is delta lambda? It is roughly 400 by 6. So, about uh, 60, 60 67 gigahertz. 67 gigahertz is roughly what in nanometer. So, this is something useful number 10 gigahertz at 1550 if I do this calculation is 0 0.08 nanometer. Okay. So, roughly about 66 gigahertz would be or 70 gigahertz if I say 56.5. Seven times more than this. Check check for yourself. Numbers, exact numbers could be slightly different. So, what are we trying to say? We are saying that if I modulate at 25 gigabaud, the spread because of modulation, because of the fact that you modulate it, is only 0.5 nanometer. 
but the spectral spread of the LED itself is 25 nanometer. Of course, you will not use an LED to do this modulation at 25 gigabaud, but what I am trying to say is that which spread matters now? A spectral spread of the LED matters. So, I have to look at still 25 nanometer range. Let us say I use a laser now whose spectral spread is okay, what was the spectral spread of the laser that you used? Picometers. Now, the moment you start talking about the line width of a laser, you will start talking in terms of gigahertz because delta lambda is very, very small and in terms of frequencies, it is much more convenient to represent that number. So, you will say it is 10 megahertz or 20 megahertz or several kilohertz that becomes the uh, uh, line width of a laser. So, let us say I pick a laser of line width let us say uh, 10 megahertz, this was roughly uh, 66 gigahertz, line width is 10 megahertz, but the modulation gave me a 66 gigahertz bandwidth. What does that mean? Which spectral spread matters? The spectral spread because of the modulation. So, we are going to write down formulas for calculating dispersion and there is going to be a spectral spread there in that formula, right. There is going to be a delta lambda in that formula. Do not mindlessly say it is the spectral spread of my laser or the spectral spread of the modulator. I mean ideally it should have both these spectral spreads and for convenience what we would typically do is that whichever is the larger number we will use that number for calculating your spectral spread. In fact, what you should do is if you have a spread because of modulation there is a delta f, there is a delta f because of the laser, what you should do is the resulting delta f resultant you should calculate that as delta f laser. In fact, this square is delta f laser square divided by delta f modulation square, right. This is how you would find the net, but sometimes what happens is for a laser for example, this 10 megahertz is going to be uh, very small when compared to your modulation spread. So, whether you add this 10 megahertz to it in a, a gigahertz number, it may not matter. So, you would just look at the modulation spread, uh, spectral spread. Okay. So, in all this discussion on dispersion that we are going to do, we will keep talking about spectral spread and you have to use your wisdom to decide what that spectral spread is. Is it that of the source, is it that of the modulator or is it that of a combination? Depending on the relative numbers, you have to pick the right number. Okay. <coughs>